Hey guys, it's Vince. I just want to wish everybody a very happy and safe 4th of July. To all of our veterans home and abroad, I wish you the absolute best and I, and God willing, you're all home with your families uh, again celebrating this holiday. Uh, we can never forget what Independence Day means to this country and to those who have fought for this country. And again, I hope everybody is saying thank you to every vet that they meet, they see, they know. Um, without them, we would not be able to do what we do. Let's not ever forget that and always remember what Independence Day means to our heritage. That being said, I want to cover in this video a couple topics that keep coming up redundantly. Um, I'm getting busier and busier, um, and I feel like at one point I'm getting caught up, and then of course it just doesn't happen. So what I want to do is just cover a couple quick topics that seem to be uh, redundantly getting placed more and more in front of me, and that is about doing performing a retrofit on a Chinese machine. Now many of you have questions when it comes to doing a retrofit as far as what it involves. Um, and I get questions about this all the time. I get pictures. This is from a potential client, and I'm covering a retrofit with him right now. Um, guys, when you're doing a retrofit, you have to look over that machine, and I mean from top to bottom, from electronics to all the hardware, and present it to me in a way that you understand what you're actually replacing. Because the retrofit typically will mean possibly changing motors, possibly changing motor mounts and hardware, uh, definitely changing your spindle cable because virtually none of them are shielded properly from China, um, possibly changing the connectors on your spindle because again, once you swap the connector, you're definitely not gonna reuse the connector that was on the old cable, or at least I should say 98% of you aren't going to do that. Um, and again, it's, it's a factor of budgeting as well. Um, but please keep in mind, every detail must be covered, your cable chain, I get that always brought up after the fact. When you're looking at your system and you're looking at updating your system, um, the cheap cables that come from China, once again, they're not properly shielded. They barely fit in the cable chain that they supply. Once you upgrade a system to a Gecko system, especially one of my systems, again, you're getting 20 gauge cables. And again, the cabling is prograde. So each cable is much thicker than the stock cables that came with your system. We're also upgrading the voltage. Typical voltage standpoints on Chinese machines are anywhere between 24 to 36 volts. Some older machines are even at 12 to 18, which is just ridiculous. Um, when you're looking at that, I want you to really pay attention to all of these factors because like you see right here, I believe this spindle is either an 800 kilowatt or a 1.5. An 800 kilowatt or 1.5 kilowatt spindle typically have this type of plug, whereas a 2.2 kW spindle will have a different type of plug. If we're retrofitting it, that means, of course, we're going to encompass changing that plug. Okay, if you're not comfortable soldering, you'll have to talk to me. We can work out a deal to where, again, I can encompass doing that. But I want you guys to be fully aware of what kind of elephant you're eating when you're performing that retrofit. Okay, you can see these cheap motor mounts here. Uh, again, they're nylon spaced. If you're gonna if you're gonna go with new motors or if you're gonna swap out um, again the motor mounts for more rigidity, you're definitely gonna want to go with a stainless platform as a standoff. I don't recommend aluminum; it's a little softer. Uh, but again, uh, any metal substrate is definitely gonna be better than plastic. So just keep that in mind. Um, as we go through here, you can see that we've basically got a plug that once again the client is actually showing me to let me know what he's exactly using with his system. And, and again, uh, doing that mainly because, like I stated earlier, the 2.2K spindle uses a totally different plug than what's used on the 8, 800 kilowatt or the 1.5. Um, you can see it's still a four pin, but this variable, again, you can see the ceramic insert inside there. It's a totally different plug platform. So once again, always the pictures he's providing is excellent, but always review the details. You can see he took another picture, which is perfect. This is an area I wanted to cover because this actual system is a little bit different than what I'm used to seeing. Um, once again, this is the panel of a 6040 integrated uh, Chinese system, once again, built by them directly. And you can see here, once again, and, and I've covered this many times, but he was uh, nice enough to actually take a picture of the VFD. This is one of those now forever VFDs. Um, another brand that just hit the market. You could see none of these wires over here are properly shielded. We've covered this numerous times. None of these wires in this system are going to give you bulletproof performance. 
odds are you're definitely going to be dealing with lots of EMI, especially with the VFD once again mounted inside the unit. If we look on the side here, this is where it gets interesting. You see we've got UVW, again that goes to the spindle itself, and we've got uh, 220 coming into the spindle. This might be a 110 uh, version of the VFD. There are quite a few now hitting the market. Um, the client or the potential client in this in instance actually messaged me and is having an interesting issue when he's doing uh, plunge cuts, as soon as he just tries to actually access a depth of cut, uh, the, the unit blows a fuse. Well, many of you already know, if you have your electronics in the enclosure along with the VFD, the VFD is going to pull the largest amount of amps. But if they're all being supplied power through one cable going to the enclosure, as soon as this unit takes a spike because the spindle is actually trying to cut deeper or is under slight resistance, the amperage goes up. Once that happens, the possibility of blowing a fuse is virtually inevitable, especially when you factor in um, what breaker you guys are running. So again, keep that in mind. It's something I've never discussed in any previous video, but it's a valid point. When he brought it up, I never really thought about it before, but when he kept telling me he was blowing fuses and he shot me these pictures, uh, again, when I'm there with you, and this is what I consider being there with you is seeing the pictures, I can definitely dictate what the issue is. And again, looking at this mess, it's there's a lot of issues here. If you guys have a VFD mounted in an enclosure like this with your actual electronics, whether you're going to do a retrofit and change that as far as changing the drives themselves, or you plan on keeping the system, the first thing to keep in mind, if at all possible, is removing the VFD away segregating it from your electronics anything that's dealing with the controller itself the drives and the drives power supply you want that to be in the enclosure by itself if you're purchasing one of these systems and you see it's got the VFD installed inside the enclosure talk to the manufacturers see if they will sell you the VFD uh, externally mounted tell them you don't want it that way because if you purchase it this way you're essentially asking for problems. I mean, even more problems than dealing with just the Chinese drives themselves. Okay, so again, I'm giving you guys a heat of warning. Anything I can do to help you guys as far as making the right choice, this is a frightening setup because once again, the largest amount of amps are gonna be pulled by this VFD. Then you also have the amps being pulled by the power supply that's supplying the drives all of their power. Once you incorporate the two of these all on one power cord you're asking for immense amount of problems okay and again we're, he's not even here he doesn't even realize if the EMI is even present in the machine because right now it's just blowing fuses but again it's it's all due to poor assembly characteristics and I want you guys to be aware of what to look for when you see this inside the system it's immediate red flag as far as saying okay I need to change something and I know budgets play a big role I, I've spoken to many of you and I know the big thing here is Chinese, their, their dollar price point on these systems is just ridiculous. It should be a red flag right there when you're buying an entire controller with VFD and everything and the chassis for about 2K. You know something is not right. I cannot emphasize that enough. Not if it's a quality machine. And when I say quality, once again, you can see the wire tie wrap here being used on the VFD. None of these wires, of course, and you can see this visibly, none of these are shielded. Okay, so all of that EMI is penetrating the system on top of it all being run, once again, as discussed, on one actual uh, power input from the AC. So everything on this system is all on one breaker, and you're really asking for problems. So just, again, be careful with that. We go through, you can see now forever, you can see they actually removed the VFDs. Uh, actual control panel it's mounted on the front of the unit that keeps it ergonomic looking we've discussed that before they make it look really really nice but again it's frightening to think that if you're not careful it, even though they make it look pretty it's gonna burn you and I can't emphasize that enough we go through you can see that your boards here none of these cables at all are shielded nothing you just took a nice close-up of the actual wiring in here and I'm not sure, I can't see, I think this is 16 gauge. I'm hoping it's 16 gauge. It certainly looks like it is, or at least 16 gauge, and we're good there. So again, I hope this video has been helpful for you guys doing a retrofit. If you have questions, please ask. 
Um, I may not get back to you right away. I'm doing the best I can. Um, I'm right now literally working at least 12 hours a day trying to catch up on messages and emails and um, possible even, even retrofit quotes. Um, but if you have a direct issue with the system, it's better to wait for me to contact you and again set up a phone call so we can discuss your applications and what you're actually dealing with so that we can correct the issue accordingly. You know, every system is different. There is not one system I work with that's exactly the same. Many of the Chinese chassis, uh, as far as the mechanics, are generally the same. But when we start dealing with other uh, chassis hitting the market, which you know China doesn't sleep, guys. They're coming out with chassis all the time. Uh, there's tons and tons of, uh, you know, backdoor engineering going on where, you know, new companies are striving to release their own maker type machines. And again keeping up with that trend is difficult so for every machine I'd rather just sit with you we'll discuss it you tell me what you see again if you have the machine in front of you it helps me tremendously and you forwarding me pictures about as many details as possible will help me create the perfect retrofit for you so you buy everything one time and we get it done the right way that's essential um, something else I want to discuss with you guys that uh, has been happening quite a bit is um, I actually have uh, another client of mine who's doing an upgrade on a 6040. I've had a, quite a few of them actually taking place, but um, this this particular client actually sent me um, some video footage of him performing the upgrade using one of my controllers, which uh, again, I cannot emphasize enough, guys. If you send me videos, I want to show everybody what you're doing because you're going to help teach everybody else what's going on. The more educated everyone is learning from everyone else, that's what we're aiming for. And again, uh, Rick, his name is Rick Perry. This is his channel. I'm going to put links in the bottom of the description so everybody can review it. Um, he started doing the upgrade. He's using a stock 6040 right now. Um, and again, Rick has got a lot of mechanical experience. He's very adept in machining uh, and electrical wiring. You'll see that as you go through this. Um, and again, he was just adamant about doing car parts. He's doing a lot of different parts, and his machining knowledge is really extensive. And what's really amazing, it's got he's actually been able to machine quite a bit with the stock controller, but he's ready to take it to another level, and that's when he purchased the Gecko. So, again, he's got my full system right now. He's in the process of getting everything mounted. He's taking his time. Of course, he's a busy guy, um, but I want you guys to see that. And then this way, if you guys have any questions, you can speak to him directly or speak to me. Again, the more the more people we get in the community actually working together, I know you guys work with each other very well. And any questions that come up, we can all answer together. And that's the whole point is that we help each other and with the correct information. And, that, and that's what I really want. It's just there's we all know there's a plethora of misinformation online. And I'm trying to do my best to eliminate it slowly but surely. As a team, I know we can do it. Um, that being said, I want to finalize the video with um, a thank you to everyone once again. And being it's 4th of July, I've been discussing what kind of sales I can run. Last month I ran a sale. It went great. Um, and now I want to run another sale. Um, for any of you that want to get involved in CNC and I wanted to come up with a package basically designed around plasma systems because I have a lot of veterans coming home that want to start businesses and welding in the military is very common um, so I decided to do a basic plasma package as a, as a DIY kit uh, to help anybody get started I only have two of these kits so please keep in mind um, and again because the price point I'm offering these at I'm really really low I mean I'm, I'm at a point where profit is no more uh, you know even an option it's more just I want to, you guys to have an option to get involved with this do it the right way and again get a system that not only comes with support but also comes now with a three-year warranty gecko drive guys just to brush up on things make sure everybody's on the same page Gecko Drive now is released a three-year warranty standard on all of their drives. Okay, that is the longest warranty in industrial drives you will find. Okay, three-year warranty is just amazing. So again, you're going to get peace of mind. You're getting U.S. support. I put this package together with my own components. I know it's a fantastic package for anyone wanting to get involved in CNC, whether it be with a plasma system, which is truly what I designed it for, or if you want to do a four axis router, um, again, very capable system. Uh, we're going to go with a G540. We're going with my 48 volt, 12 and a half amp power supply, uh, four 300 ounce quarter inch dual shaft steppers. 
Uh, we're going to either give you the option to go with 413 foot of my pro grade motor cables. Um, they are 300 volt, 80 degrees Celsius temperature rated cables. They're made with signal cable. Uh, I, these cables, guys, I cannot keep them in stock. I mean, they fly out the door. They're really, really well made. Um, and they do have the DB9 uh, motor connectors already on them. You don't have to solder them. Or for my DIY guys, if you're doing a plasma system and you want to go bulletproof, and I mean extreme bulletproof, we could go with 60 foot of double shielded 18-4 cable, and I'll give you the four pro solderless connectors and also the solder connectors for your double shielded. So again, you guys have the choice. If you do go with the four motor cables, I'll still throw in the four pro solderless connectors so you'll be all set there. It's more or less a plug and play system as far as a DIY kit. The only thing you'll have to do is wire the, com the actual components as far as, um, of course, um, the drive itself and all the other accessories inside your enclosure. But $500, you guys are save, saving well over $100 on this package. I'm giving you all the latest and greatest, and of course, you're getting a three-year warranty through Gecko. Um, and again, I'll do $500 shipped in the U.S. If I have international clients that would like to purchase this package, once again, I only have two of these. So message me, and I will split the shipping on international orders with this package. Okay, so keep that in mind. You can message me direct at storm2313 at gmail.com. I will not do these sales through eBay because, again, the fees will kill me on this. Okay, they take about 13%, and I'm giving you guys back what you've given me. And to me, that makes more sense. We work like men, and we work like professionals, and you contact me, and we'll do the deal right and get you the best price we can. So once again, everybody have a great fourth. Celebrate with your family. Eat well. And again, God bless America. Take care.